In the Gundam fandom, there's a lot of talk about which mobile suit is the strongest. But today, I wanted to focus on some of the strongest individual weapons. And rather than just listing the 10 strongest Mega Particle Cannons I could find, I decided to keep things interesting by having a look at 10 different kinds of weapons. But you know what's my strongest weapon? Skillshare. The online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for just about everyone. Because knowledge is power. So whether you want to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or get lost in creativity, you'll be sure to find something that fits with your needs and your level. Like the future of work, 5 Mindsets to Power Your Career by Jacob Morgan. A powerful class that will be sure to add some valuable knowledge to your arsenal. And because Skillshare is tailored towards learning, there are no ads and premium classes are added all of the time. Meaning that there's always something new to explore. So click the link in the description down below if you too want to start exploring your creativity today. The first 1000 of my subscribers to do so will get a 1 month trial of Skillshare completely free. As for the strongest mobile suit weapons then, we're starting off with the strongest version of a weapon you can find on most mobile suits and virtually any Gundam. The Beam Saber. Usually, this is just a humble cylinder that can generate a beam blade. Sometimes their design is a bit more elaborate, sometimes they'll even generate two blades, but in terms of the more traditional beam savers, nothing can compare to the madness of the Epion's beam saver. Not only does it look quite distinct, but thanks to the fact that it's directly connected to the mobile suit's reactor, its output can be changed from normally powerful to ridiculously overpowered. At maximum output, this thing was even able to cut through Space Fortress Barge like it was a Leo. There goes Zex! What? You're not needed here. have no need for you in outer space. The Epion wasn't a close combat oriented machine for nothing. However, the design and power of the Beam Saber was pushed even further in Gundam 00 with the 00 Gundam's GN Sword 3. This puppy had a bit of everything. It could serve as a heat sword thanks to the GN particles, it could form a beam saber that could then be overclocked thanks to the Transam, it could change into a beam rifle that had more than enough power to knock out a battleship, and it could even perform an ultimate attack, the Riser Sword. What more do you want? On the other side of the spectrum then we have Sniper Machines. A class that longtime viewers will know is very close to my heart. And the most powerful sniper rifle we've seen in Gundam without a doubt goes to the Dynamis Gundam. Its normal sniper rifle combined with a powerful head mounted sniper camera was already plenty powerful enough, but what really put it over the top was the super sub stratospheric altitude gun. This top secret sniper rifle had the ability of sniping targets in satellite orbit. Sure, it had drawbacks like being huge and clunky, requiring 20 seconds to charge each shot, and requiring an extra backskirt unit to suppress the recoil, but none of that really matters if the enemy is like 10,000 kilometers away. Lock-on Stratus? More like Lock-on Exos. And sticking with ridiculously high outputs in ridiculously large weapons, we've got the Hyper Mega Cannon 
that was first tested out on the FATS and then later carried over to the full armored double Zeta Gundam with an output of 79.8 megawatts there wasn't a lot that could stand up to the raw destructive power of this thing. To put things into perspective, the RX-78-2's beam rifle, a weapon that was heralded as having the power of a battleship's cannon, had only 1.9 megawatts. And the Zeta Gundam's large hyper mega launcher had an output of 8.3. Not only was the Hyper Mega Cannon the strongest weapon of its day, but for many days to come. The only thing that this thing lacked, relatively speaking, was accuracy. Something that was fixed by the Theta Plus in the form of a sensor radome. But that's enough oversized weapons. For now. Let's look at something more compact, like a pistol. And when I tried thinking about the most powerful pistols in Gundam, my mind just kept going to the dual pistols of the Dynamis and the Strike Noir. But then it hit me. The Crossbone Gundam's Buster Gun. This thing might look like an old school flintlock pistol, but looks can be very deceiving. By itself, it was already quite the powerful little beam pistol, but it could also be combined with the beam Zamber to form the more powerful Zan Buster. So not only was it powerful by itself, but it was also a very versatile weapon. And if you want the most powerful beam rifle then, look no further than the Unicorn Gundam's Beam Magnum. With the advancement of beam technology, we saw the introduction of the E-Pack, basically a magazine, but with energy. And usually, a single E-Pack could power the average beam rifle for quite some shots. This was not the case with the beam magnum used by the Unicorn Gundams. Each E-Pack was only good for a single high-powered shot. So rather than having space for one E-Pack on the gun, it was instead designed to take five E-Packs at once. And the power they gave this beam rifle can best be described as unrivaled. A single shot could destroy a mobile armor, and even a grazing shot could destroy a mobile suit. It's no wonder Benajer would do everything in his power to keep using this monstrous beam rifle. And if you're wondering why this thing has a bunch of arms mounted on its back, well, the beam magnum was so powerful that if used by a machine that wasn't specifically designed to use it, it would simply fry the arm using it. So not only was Benajer using an E-Pack with each shot, he was literally using an arm each shot. At some point you gotta start wondering if the costs outweigh the benefits. Like, instead of using a supercharged beam rifle, get a high level railgun. And I think it's fair to say that not just the most powerful, but also the most famous one of these weapons is the Dainsley. Sure, their individual accuracy might have left something to be desired, but their high damage potential when using the right ammo combined with group tactics allowed the Daneslave to turn the Grazes using them from Grunts into Demon Slayers. And if you really want to give your Grunts a boost, why not just strap a nuclear missile to them? You might think that's a bit drastic, but you can't argue with the results. The earliest example of this was the MS-06C Zaku-2 C-Type, a mobile suit built from the ground up with nuclear warfare in mind. But the most prominent user of nukes is without a doubt the Wyndham with its multi-striker pack, or as most people will probably call it, the nuclear striker. Because let's face it, that's what it was used for. Nope. 
and because this is a striker pack, this also means that you can easily strap nukes onto any other striker pack compatible mobile suit. Remember kids, you can be racist if the other race doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, it might not be a bad idea to have a weapon on your mobile suit that can do something about those nukes, like the strongest funnels mounted on a mobile suit. And to my surprise, the strongest one I could find were those used by the Sazabi and the Yawk Dogas. These bad boys have a power output of a whopping 10.6 megawatts. Remember what I said about the RX-78-2's beam rifle and the Zeta's Hyper Mega Launcher? Jesus, the new spin funnels only have 3 megawatts. They are more agile and can create a shield, but still. Also, there is another contender for this category. The Dragoons used by the X-1 Destroy Gundam. Also known as the Sturmfausts, these massive things are outfitted with a main beam cannon, five finger beam guns, and a positron deflector shield each. So not only are these things powerful, they've got additional defenses too. And while their output might not be listed, their performance should speak for itself. And then there's one more thing that gives these Dragoons an edge over many other remote weapons, and that is the fact that they can actually be used under gravity. And yes, the destroyed Gundam is officially classified as a mobile suit, therefore making it fair game for this list. So as an honorable mention, we've also got the two Aufprall Dreizen high energy beam cannons on its backpack. Again, the performance kind of speaks for itself, but we don't have any official numbers to go along with it. And talking about twin cannons. <laughs> the double excess twin satellite cannons might not be the most practical weapons on Earth, because, well, just like the original Gundam X satellite cannon, they do require a direct link with the moon, so no moon equals no shooting. But once the moon is out, you'd better not be within its very broad line of fire. And since we're on the topic of Gundam X, they've also got a very good contender for strongest remote weaponry because the GX bits tread a very fine line between mobile suit and mobile suit weapon. Because basically they function like funnels in the sense that they're controlled by a new type pilot, but rather than being a thruster with a weapon, they're almost a fully fledged mobile suit. And while they might be the quote-unquote budget version of the main machine, the GX bits still mount a full four satellite cannon each. And before we move on to the final weapon of this list, there are two more honorable mentions I want to give. First up, the Wings of Light equipped on the Victory 2 Gundam. A machine that is often considered as one of the strongest Gundams around. Now, while the Wings of Light are certainly extremely powerful and also very versatile, they're actually a byproduct created by exhaust gases of its Minovsky drive system. So they can only be partially controlled as a de facto weapon, which is why I decided to have it as an honorable mention instead. And second of all, we have the Gundams from G Gundam with their special attacks. Depending on the Gundam, their kinda weapons, 
but they're more akin to a Kamehameha wave. So that wouldn't really be in the spirit of this list. Otherwise, the Sekiha Love Love Tenkyoken would have no doubt been the strongest weapon ever. Because if anime has taught me anything, it is that there is no greater power than friendship or love. These hands of ours are burning red! Their loud cry tells us to grasp happiness! And then last but not least, we have the Moonlight Butterfly used by the Turn A and the Turn X. In short, both of these machines were outfitted with nano machines that could either repair or destroy technology. And just the Turn A Gundam alone had enough of these nano machines on board to destroy all technology on Earth and turn it all into sand. The name of this attack then came from the pattern that formed on the back of the unit when deploying the nano machines. Truly the most powerful weapon ever to be used by a washing machine. At the very least it didn't kill organic matter by design. So if you were on earth you'd be relatively safe, but you could certainly cause mass genocide if you used this attack in space. And if that failed, it still had access to the undefeated Gundam Hammer. And that has been all for this list of the most powerful mobile suit weapons that I could think of. So let me know in the comments down below which one you think is the most powerful, whether it was on this list or not, and which one you would want to mount on your own mobile suit. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.